Welcome back, everybody. I'm currently on vacation, so in this different dev environment, but this will be a present for all the Windows users who may be looking for a video about JavaScript's scope. So let me just switch over here. So, apologies for slightly inconsistent videos this past week. Uh, the things will resume as normal in about another week when I get back from my vacation. This is just a quick video to keep on top of it. So this is a video that I haven't made yet, and it's not a super complex subject, but it's important. So let's dive into it. First things first, what is scope? So scope is the variable access that a, per per that a particular block of code has. And blocks of code in JavaScript, typically, are created by functions. So if we create a function, let's just call it my function, this first curly brace is the start of the block, and this end curly brace is the end of the block. Simple enough, right? So the two high-legged areas there, that's the start and the end of the block. So when I refer to scope, I'm, and refer to a block, that's a block, and then whatever variables are available inside of that block, that's what this, that's the scope of that particular block. So let's just say that we were going to console.log my variable, and then if I execute my function, oops, which I did not camel case, And we will see that my variable is not <clears throat> is not defined. But if I place a variable called my variable on the global scope, which means it's not the only way that it's limited is by the in the outermost scope of this entire file. So I start this file with a function that has a curly brace at the top line and a curly brace on the second last line. That's the absolute maximum that any of my variables can reach inside of this function, or sorry, inside of this uh, file, and I've dropped a variable called my variable into that. So now if I save this, and I run it, it's now undefined because I've not assigned it a variable value. Um, but if I just say my variable, something nice and simple, now we have a value for my variable. However, one thing you can do is declare variables inside of your function. And this is where it might get a little bizarre. So if I declare a variable called my variable, oops, there are a couple things that you might suspect. Let's see what we actually get. So we get undefined. Now why would that be? We see that my variable clearly has a value. We just did that a second ago. Oops. Just did that a second ago. But what happens is this my variable inside of the function overwrites the value of my variable outside of this function because in the scope of my function, my variable is undefined. And so if I give it a different value, my variable is awesome. Save that. Now we get the value my variable is awesome, even though my variable also exists on the outer scope. And so the thing to remember here is that if you're looking at a scope at your program, trying to figure out what variable the value will be pointing or what value the variable holds at a particular point, then you can really just look at whatever's whatever declaration is closest to your reference to that variable that's almost always going to refer to the proper one. So what I mean by that is this, in this case, my variable is on line 11, and I'm referring to it on line 12, therefore the one on line, uh, whatever line this is, eight is not going to be the one that we're referring to, and that's just because this one was declared closest and last and within the same scope as the point where I'm referencing it. Now, this is, this is called lexical scope largely because you can just look at it and see what variable it's going to refer to and what the 
what the variable uh, list is that's available in a particular block. So I can look at the, where this brace ends and this brace starts, and I can say, OK, we only have access to whatever's in that block or whatever's outside of it. Now, the way that this reverses is if I were to change, let's say, if I console log out here, my variable. Now we'll have two variable, or two references to my variable. We've got one inside of my function, we've got one out on the global scope. And first of all, we get the one that's out on the global scope, and then we get the one that's in the function. And that's because my function is called after I'm printing out my variable from the global scope. Now, if I change this to my variable one, change that to my variable one. Now what do you, oh, and I do my variable one down here. Now we might suspect that we get two printouts of my variable is awesome. But instead, we get a reference error. Because my variable one is not defined on the global scope, it's defined inside my function. And while variable access can trickle down, so from the global scope to inner scopes, and then if I had another function inside of my function, my variable would still be available inside of that function as well. So just really quickly, if I were to make another reference to my variable one in here, it's still going to have access to this variable. And if this variable did not exist, it would still have access to this variable. The difference, though, is that it doesn't work the other way. So you can't access an inner variable in an outer scope. Uh, so that's, that's the basics of scope. I've got one more example uh, down below. So let's check that one out. I'll delete these. And it really is just to cover the idea that scope is evaluated at runtime. So even though you can see the, that scope is static, it's not changing based on runtime, uh, as in wherever you've placed the variable, that's where it's available and nothing else changes that. JavaScript is actually evaluated at runtime. And so if we have a function called result that contains a uh, timeout, a set timeout that returns my variable, oh, which I will have to redeclare now. What we will see when we console log return is we'll get an immediate return value of undefined because we're not returning anything from this function. And then we'll get the value of my variable. We get undefined. And then, oh, oh because I'm not console logging this. There we go. So we get undefined, and then we get the best variable. Now, if I remove this guy, you might hope, which I would, that this will immediately be caught. But unfortunately, it waits the two seconds, and then it throws the reference error. That's a super big pain in the butt, because if you have a process that's going to take 5, 10, 20 minutes to run, and then it gets to the point at the end of your program where it doesn't have variable access, everything blows up, and it just gives up, and it didn't detect that at the beginning of your program when it should have known that my variable doesn't exist anywhere in this program. So that's frustrating. But that's just the way it works, and it's something to be aware of. So compile time does not catch your variable access. It's at runtime that it actually catches it. Now, one thing I should actually address uh, before ending this video is the changes made to scope with regards to the let keyword. So I've been using let this whole time. It's just something that I have adopted as a best practice. Excuse me. But it actually behaves differently than var. So if you've heard let is the new var, that's a complete lie. Do not listen to that. They're very, 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 very similar. But 
in certain cases they are different because let is block scoped and var is function scoped. So up to this point, I've referenced functions as being blocks as if they are exactly the same. However, they are not. So if I have, let's just go if true just to make it super simple. You'll see curly brace and curly brace. That's a new block. Now, in, if we use var, this var will ignore the if block and just refer to the function block. So if I go var my variable equals a great variable. It's not the best anymore. It's just it's just it's pretty good. And then I return oops my variable. And we get great variable. However, if I do let, if I declare my variable with let and everything else is exactly the same, then we get a reference area. My variable is not defined. And that's because let is scoped to the if block. Because this is a block and let actually values the, or uh, actually is contained within the if block. And it's the same with uh, for loops and any block that you can create with curly braces. Let will respect that, whereas var does not. So if you need to set up something like if else uh, my variable equals. then let is not going to work here because it's not available outside of these scopes. However, we could do something like var, var, or you could do something like, so I just showed you that that does work in the last example, um, but what we could do is something like let my variable. Now we've declared it inside of the function, and, and so it's on the it's outside of the if and else blocks, so now it will behave properly. Now we get great variable because it's true, and if we make this false, we do no tests, and we get the crappy variable. So that's just a little explanation of some behavior that you might see with the let keyword that you may not expect if you're just familiar with the behavior of the var keyword. Actually, one, one more thing. Sorry again, uh, this, is, this is a video I'd like to just try to cover everything and I'm thinking of things as I go. Uh, the let keyword also has some interesting behavior in that it has what's called a lexical dead zone. And unlike var, which will get what's referred to as hoisted to the top of a function, or top of a scope, so that it's available everywhere in that scope. Let is not. So if I have code that references my variable above the declaration of my variable, then it is actually not defined yet. So let me just give it a default value of, I'll just say default value. And then if I console log my variable here, now we get a reference error, error, uh, reference error that my variable is not defined. We can see that it's clearly within that scope, but it does not give us that default value with let. And just a var, and everything is fine. It's just undefined at that point because it hasn't been assigned a value, but it does exist within that scope. So. Interesting things to know about let versus var. Please, let is not the new var. It's probably something you should use instead of var just because it gives you better coding practices because this is confusing. Why would you be using variables before you declare them? I have no idea. Just do it better. Use the let keyword. It makes you do things better. But don't go just search and replace and replace all your vars with lets because you'll probably break things. So hope that helped. Hope you learned something. Uh, sorry if this one was a little scattered. Again, I'm on vacation. Hopefully it wasn't too bad. 
and I will see you sometime next week. Thanks, guys.